The M5 MacBook Pro is a way bigger upgrade than I thought. Remember those early leaks that were saying that the M5 chip would be the only upgrade this year and that the performance gains over the M4 would be minor? Well, that's actually not the case. The M5 MacBook Pro is a gigantic upgrade over the M4. And even more so if you're coming from the M3, M2, and M1 models. So here's how the M5 compares against all the previous MacBook Pros. And speaking of these older MacBook models, if you are considering any of these Macs, check out Raylo, where you can subscribe for just £40 a month with zero upfront costs to get the M5 MacBook Pro, or any of the previous models for even less. And if you don't need a new Mac, they've also got a bunch of other devices too, so use the link below to check out Raylo's offers. So now, here's how the M5 MacBook Pro compares against all the previous MacBook Pro models. Okay, so let's talk about the raw performance of the M5 chip, and here we ran a bunch of tests. The first being Geekbench 6, where, in the single core test, the M2 was 12% faster than the M1, the M3 was 14% faster than the M2, the M4 was 16% faster than the M3, and the M5 is now 15% faster than the M4. In fact, it even outperformed the M4 Pro model here, something that's usually the case when a new generation comes out. But what does this mean for real-world usage? Well, everything you do on your MacBook will feel snappier, launching apps, browsing the web, the M5 simply just flies through everything you throw at it. For more intensive apps, that's where the multi-core performance matters, which is also something we've tested. And here we can see the M2 being 12% faster than the M1, the M3 being 22% faster than the M2, so a big jump here, then the M4 was 27% faster than the M3, and now the M5 is 16% faster than the M4. So not quite as big of a jump here, but still a massive improvement, especially if you're upgrading from the M1 or M2 models here. The M4 Pro was then even faster by another 17% due to having two more cores here. But you see, it's not just the M5 chip that's faster, the storage has been massively upgraded too. When running the AGA system test light, we can see that the M2 had about half the read speed of the M1. This was due to it having a single NAND module. This issue was then fixed with the M3 and the M4, which had an even faster storage than the M1. And now, just look at the M5. It's basically double the storage speed of the M4. In fact, it is even faster than the M4 Pro. And if we look at the write speeds, things get even more impressive for the M5, which is over 2 gigabytes per second faster than the M4 Pro, and over 6 times faster compared to the M2. But okay, enough with the synthetic benchmarks, how does this translate into some real-world usage? Well, I started off by transferring a 162 gigabyte folder filled with video footage from my CFS card that can sustain about 1 gigabyte per second transfer speeds onto each of the MacBook Pros. They all took about the same here, aside from the M2, which took more than double the time due to its slow SSD. Now, of course, if you use a faster drive, you'll also see faster transfer speeds here. And if you use a Thunderbolt 5 drive with about 6 gigabyte per second transfer speeds, you'll see even faster speeds specifically on the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which does support Thunderbolt 5. Moving on to Lightroom, which is very CPU, RAM, and storage speed heavy, we first imported 50 raw photos, which took 50% longer on the M1 compared to the more recent M4, M5, and M4 Pro models. After this, we applied an auto adjustment to one photo, as well as denoise, and then pasted those adjustments to all the remaining 49 photos. This took almost one hour on the M1. The M2 and M3 were basically neck and neck at 35 minutes, the M4 was a nice improvement at 31, however the M5 only took 24 minutes. The M4 Pro was then even faster at 17 minutes. However, in terms of the base chips, the bigger gains were from the M1 to the M2 and then from the M4 to the M5. But of course, applying these effects is only part of the story. Exporting them is another. Here, the M1 and the M2 were neck and neck, taking around 7 minutes. The M3 was significantly faster, taking about half the time. But then, take a look at the M4. 48 seconds, or 78% faster than the M3, and then the M5 was even faster at 35 seconds. In fact, it was even faster than the M4 Pro at 54 seconds, despite having less RAM and two less CPU cores. That is insanely impressive for the M5, and just wait until you see our other tests. 
But before that, just like with Lightroom, this mini LED display makes our wallpapers look absolutely stunning. Check out our recent drop, Metal Mosaics by Michael, where you get 10 colorways of this super sleek design. The black version especially suits this MacBook so well. But yeah, feel free to check them out on your iPhone and iPad too, as they will look equally as amazing. A perfect example of this is Pretty Planets by Ali, which just looks awesome on any device. So yeah, check out wallpapers for free on iOS and Android by using the links below. And now, moving on to Blender, a super popular 3D modeling and rendering software. And the cool thing about Blender is that you can use either the CPU or the GPU to render a scene. When using the CPU, we can see a really nice gradual reduction in rendering times, going from the M1 all the way to the M5 and the M4 Pro, with the M5 only being one minute behind the M4 Pro and more than twice as fast compared to the original M1. When we switch to GPU rendering, we can see a decent 15% gain, going from the M1 to the M2. The M3, however, was a massive jump, being 54% faster than the M2. The M4 was then only 9% faster, however, the M5 is another good upgrade at 18% faster compared to the M4. And of course, the M4 Pro is still the fastest one here, 24% faster than the M5. However, that's just 20 seconds slower for the M5, which is still very good. In fact, even the M3 is still really good here. And this scene, by the way, was rendered without ray tracing, which makes an even bigger impact on rendering times. How much of an impact does it make? Well, in Cyberpunk, we ran the ray tracing benchmark. This was at a 1200p resolution with metal effects set to balanced and all the settings set to medium. First of all, the game looked incredible with ray tracing enabled and on that bright 1600 nit mini LED display. And performance wise, the M1 and the M2 models couldn't run this at all since they've got no dedicated hardware for ray tracing. The M3, even though it does, also couldn't run it because it only has 8GB of RAM being the base model. The M4 could and it got 18 frames per second. The M5 however got 29 or 33% more which is incredible considering that it still got a 10 core GPU just like the M4. And guess what, the M4 Pro with its 16 core GPU and 8GB of extra RAM only got 1 frame per second extra. That is insane coming from the M5. And I can't wait to see what the M5 Pro and the M5 Max will be capable of. But okay, what if we disable ray tracing so we can test out Cyberpunk on the M1, M2 and M3 models as well? Well, the M1 and M2 are able to run it at around 30 frames per second, which is not bad considering that we are still running this at 1200p and medium settings. The M3, however, gets a massive boost to 47 frames per second. The M4 gets to 54, still not quite 60, however the M5 gets a gigantic boost, running the game at 75 frames per second. That's the biggest GPU boost of any base M chip generation. The M4 Pro does outperform it at 94 frames per second, but still, being able to get over 60 in Cyberpunk any settings on a base model is really impressive. So far, the CPU got some really big upgrades. The GPU got some even bigger upgrades, and the storage got some even bigger upgrades. But wait until you see the AI performance. However, before that, we've got one last test to do. My favorite one, Final Cut Pro 10. Or sorry, 11, I think it's 11 now. Here, we rendered my iPad Pro M5 review, which is a 12 minute project, filled with complex effects. This took the M1 more than double the project length to render at 28 minutes. The M2 was even slower at 34, probably due to its slower storage speeds. The M3 was close to 1 to 1 at 19 minutes or 45% faster than the M2. But then we start seeing the real gains. The M4 rendered this in less than 1 to 1 at 7 minutes and 44 seconds or 60% faster than the M3. And the M5? Just 6 minutes or 21% faster than the M4. The crazy part, it was even one second faster than the M4 Pro. That is insane, considering that the M5 is the base chip and also one with less RAM and less CPU and less GPU cores compared to the M4 Pro. So now on to AI performance. We first tested Topaz Video AI to upscale a 20 second 720p clip to 4K. And despite this being just 20 seconds long, it took the M1, M2 and M3 chips over 
30 minutes. However, the real gains start from the M4, which was 90% faster than the M3, taking just 2 minutes and 30 seconds, with the M5 being another 18% faster than the M4. And the crazy part, the M5, once again, outperformed the M4 Pro by 7 seconds. Despite the M4 Pro having 8GB of extra RAM, which does normally play a big part in AI workflows. So I'm pretty sure that if we had a 24 gig or 32 gig of RAM M5 MacBook Pro, it would have finished in maybe even half the time. Which brings me to some large language models. We first tested out the 8 billion parameter Llama model. This took 31 seconds to generate the first token on the M1. The M2 took more than twice as long due to its slow SSD, which does actually affect the LM performance too, as the model needs to be loaded from the disk during the process. The M3 was considerably faster at 8 seconds, the M4 only took 2, while the M5 only took 1 second, or 31% faster than the M1. The M4 Pro was then even faster at half a second, likely due to the extra RAM. Still, waiting 1 second for a token to generate makes it totally usable, so the M5 is a major upgrade over all the previous versions here. We then also ran a much larger 20 billion parameter model, GPT OSS. This took so long to generate the first token that it was only usable on the M4 Pro which took 3 seconds. However, just take a look at all the improvements going from the M1 to M3 to the M4 and the M5. Still not usable, but it's really nice seeing how much faster the M4 and the M5 generations are here. All in all, the M5 is a massive upgrade over the M4 in the CPU performance, GPU performance, AI, and also the storage. Even more so over the previous M2 and M1 models. And of course, if you are upgrading from the M1 or M2, you also get the new design, the mini LED screen, the upgraded speakers, the ports, everything is just a huge upgrade. Even compared to the M3, you get an extra Thunderbolt port on the right, plus dual external display support. And in fact, it's so good that it was even able to outperform the M4 Pro in quite a lot of cases. So if you're looking to get the M5 MacBook Pro, you'll be extremely happy. Of course, if you need even more performance, then the M5 Pro and the M5 Max are set to launch in the spring of next year. And then the redesigned M6 Pro and M6 Max MacBook Pros with an OLED screen, an even thinner and lighter body, and no more notch, those are rumored to launch either at the end of 2026 or early 2027. That's the big upgrade to wait for, but of course, if you don't want to wait, then the M5 is an amazing machine. One that I'm pretty sure will last you for many years to come. That, or you could also always get a refurbished M4 Pro, which retails for about the same on apple.com refurbished. But what do you guys think of the new M5 MacBook Pro? Let me know down below. And also check out wallpapers for some awesome designs for your MacBook Pro, like this one right here. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.